Hey, so good evening, YouTubers. Hey, tonight I wanted to bring you something just kind of uh, special to show you. Um, this is a watch that has been in my family for literally decades. Um, and uh, it's just something that I thought it'd be fun to share with you guys. You guys know that I'm basically, um, I'm really into Japanese dive watches. That's kind of my thing. But um, I do understand and I completely appreciate the significance of um, what historically the Swiss have done and, uh, you know, especially Rolex um, and what they've developed over the years and how, you know, I have my own thoughts of where they are nowadays and the direction they've taken, but that's here and or there with, with um, what this is and this being a, uh, what I consider a historical piece. So um, as you guys can see, Combat Jesus is stepping in, kind of uh, hanging out, monitoring this review. Um, and I just, for real quick, I'm going to push push this aside, and I want to clarify something with this, guys. Um, I'm not I'm not pushing anything religious on anybody. Uh, this is a this is a character that, believe it or not, I found in <clears throat> a dollar store uh, t-shirt bin. Um, I take my kids in California. We have these dollar stores where you can go to the store and everything. And there's a buck. You give them ten bucks, they run around with a get a bunch of you know, basically garbage, really. Um, but anyways, you know, it's fun for the kids. And as I was wandering through there, I looked down in this in this in this bin, and uh, there's this guy sitting there. And so I had no idea there was n there was nothing else in the store, anything like it. And so I picked him up. I've never seen anything like this. You know, obviously he's supposed to look like Jesus uh, carrying a dove of peace, but he's also packing a uh, M16. You can see it's sticking out under his vest. He's got combat gear on his belt. Combat boots, knee pads, so I don't, and a helmet. I don't really know anything about this character. I call him Combat Jesus because that's what he looks like to me. But if you guys do know where this character came from, please, please post it below in the comments because I've looked, I've tried looking online and I just cannot find anything out about this guy. So for now, he is Combat Jesus. So, and he, uh, I just, I just stick him in the shot because he's curious. So, anyways, on to the review, guys. Um, again, historical piece, been in my family for decades, so let's just move along with this. I'm just going to kind of bring everything out of the box here and just show you guys um, all the official stuff. And if you guys are, uh, if you guys own a Rolex, you guys have, um, have seen the paperwork and, and whatnot that comes with these. So, um... Oh, one year warranty. Wow. Back in the day, huh? So, uh, basically your warranty paper with your stamp on it. This is like a, a watermarked paper. It's got the roll stamp in it and stuff. Very official. Um, very old. Um, but cool. So I'm going to put everything back in here. Just keep everything the way I got it. I don't want to mess any of this up. So... This is your Rolex Oyster. Wow. This is going back a couple days, huh? Let's see what we see here. Oh, the Trieste. There we go. The Rolex Oyster. Pretty cool. And so, this box has seen better days. You can see the edges are starting to kind of come apart on it and whatnot. And <laughs> my dad tore that price tag off of there. Um, but I can tell you that uh, this was $800 in 1983. And uh, he was friends with the gentleman selling this watch, the jeweler selling the watch. And uh, he actually got, I think, you know, 10% off of that or 15% off of that. So this watch was probably, you know, $750 or right around there back in the day, back in 1983. So um, without further ado... I will go ahead and open this up. Uh, get out the... Wow, that's the original foam from back in the day. Okay. So guys, what we have here is a Rolex GMT Master 1. Uh, reference number on this watch is 16750. And I don't even think... Oh man, look at even the even the bracelet tag is still down here in the bottom of the box. And there's a link, there's a link down there too. That's cool. So uh I don't the 
this watch isn't running. I don't even know if I want to. There it goes. It fired right up. No problem. So, give you guys a peek here of what I think is a, a really, really beautiful watch. Um, so, this is the GMT Master One. Uh, like I said, reference number on this watch is 16750. Um, these models were developed from 1981 to 1988. These models still had the holes, the drilled lugs, okay? Um, basically, this was the next move up from the reference model number 1675. And the biggest change with this one is it has the quick set date here. So the date actually, it instead of rolling over slowly, it does the quick, uh, the quick change at midnight. So, um, and one of the coolest things with this watch, it's hard to see in this light, but this watch has the matte dial with no white gold indices. Um, these were really, they stopped making this dial, I think in 1986. Um, and it's a rare dial. Um, as you guys can see here, there's no, there's no white gold around these indices. Um, and it is definitely a matte dial. <clears throat> they also offered this model with the white gold around the indices and the gloss dial, which was a much more popular model. And what happened <clears throat> over the years is guys took these in to get them serviced. You know, people said, hey, do you want to upgrade to the fancier dial? And, oh, yeah, you know, go ahead and put that in there. So what's happened is it's made this model um, <clears throat> even a little more rare um, because it's never, it's never had that done to it. So... Um, just an absolutely, absolutely beautiful watch. This has a 3075 movement in it. Um, it is a hacking movement. And like I said, it has a quick set date. This is a uh, 28,800 vibrations per hour movement. Um, and if you guys don't know what the, about the GMT watches, these were developed. Uh, I want to say Pan Am came to Rolex in the 50s and said, hey, we want you guys to develop a watch for our pilots that can basically keep keep track of two time zones, um, you know, for the pilots that were flying internationally and going all over the world. It was very important for a pilot to be able to see, you know, what time it was in a different zone or, or in the zone he was coming from. So, um, you know, back in the day, look at that, guys, folded in links. Um, open the clasp here. Show you guys the clasps. The Rolex stamp. So it's just, it's, you know, it's a classic, classic, classic piece. Um, you know, and I don't have my caliper here. You know, if you guys want to look up the measurements of this watch, I want to say it's a right about 40. Um, just, just by feeling it and, and what I think I'm feeling here, it's right about a 40 millimeter. So it's nice and petite. It's a nice small watch. This watch is actually, I mean, guys, um, this watch is in incredible condition, really, actually, for a watch from 1983. Look at the bezel. There's just not a scratch on it. It was kept... Uh, I know the owner very well, and this watch has been kept. Uh, it's kind of a safe queen, to be honest with you. This watch doesn't see much daylight, which is fine at this point. Um, you know, it, it had its time, and I think really it's... You know, you wear it on the wrist out every once in a while, but really this is something that's getting historically important, especially with this original matte dial on it and stuff like this. And I did I did explain to the owner once I'd done some research on it that um, to really, really be careful when sending this out to make sure nobody messes with that dial or tries to swap that original dial out. So these do have an acrylic crystal. That was the that was the case back then. This is on the uh, <clears throat> the oyster. Uh, I think this is the 78360 bracelet version, okay? So, uh, cool watch, you know, very cool watch, and something I wanted to share with you guys. I just thought it was something to talk about, and um, I know you guys all like fancy cool watches, and this is vintage, so this is the real deal, guys. Um, oh my gosh, the bezel. The bezel doesn't even click. Oh, I shouldn't have done this. Very hard to turn. No real clicking. I don't even know if these clicked back in the day, to be honest, guys. Um, if it did, it's, it needs some definite um, some work done to it, but it locks in nice and tight right there on the 12 o'clock. So just an absolutely beautiful watch. Um, guys, I wanted to share this with you, just kind of show you something. Um, that's what it's all about here, right? Just sharing, and we, we show each other neat things, and 
uh, go on from there. But this is a very neat watch, very historical watch. Um, the first GMTs actually came out, I think they finally developed the first one, sent them in a Rolex in 1954. Uh, those had a Bakelite dial on them, um, and those are, I think, referred to as the Pussy Galore models um, because it was the, the watch worn by one of James Bond nemesis in the Pussy Galore movie. So anyways, guys, hey, thank you very much for watching. Um, at the same time I brought this home, just so you guys know, I did get a box in the mail, so I will be doing an unboxing video probably, uh, geez, either later tonight or tomorrow, and I'll get that up on my channel. It's a... Um, Another new exciting watch I want to show you. It's actually kind of in the same genre of what I usually do. Um, that's why I wanted to step out a little bit tonight and show you guys something completely different and kind of really out of my wheelhouse of stuff I normally show you guys. Um, but yeah, it's cool. So I will be doing an unboxing video. Um, I am going to try to attach my trailer. If you guys haven't seen, I've developed a trailer for my channel and I'm going to start putting that at the beginning of my videos. So um, hopefully that all works out good. And uh, you know what, guys? Thank you for watching. Have a great Saturday or Sunday, wherever you are. And uh, we'll talk at you later.